Hey, hey, hey! How's it going? Do it yourself first. Welcome to the garage built from hell. Yep, I don't even know where to begin this update. This really, really sucks. But anyway, I'll give you the quick version. Now, as you may have remembered, in my first video on the garage build, or the second video, I guess, you could see me measuring the distance between the top of the where the slab would go to the power lines that are gonna be above the garage. Now, that's because you have to maintain a certain amount of clearance between the top of the building, which is gonna be 18 feet high, and this, these power lines. Now, I was under the impression that it was gonna be eight feet, and the county was gonna be okay with that, but when the inspector came and saw that we were building on their power lines, he said that we can't build on their power lines, especially since we're gonna need a crane to put the roof trusses on this building, and that's gonna create a problem, but not just that, it's all just simply against county law to build on the power lines. Now, my question, which is probably gonna be your question is, why did they give me the permit if they saw that there was power lines gonna be above this building. Now his answer was that on my property, there shouldn't be any power lines on the property unless someone gave, gave an easement. The previous owner probably here gave an easement to the power company to run these power lines over his property. So yeah, here's a look at the property. Here's the power lines running right through the middle, sort of, and that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the neighbors, so that neighbor also gave the power company an easement probably, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago. Now I went back and forth with the city a couple of times, but the problem is when you deal with the city and you're trying to get a permit for building something, in my case, this, this garage, is that you don't really want to be on, <laughs> on their bad side, really, because it's not just inspection for you know allowing you to build it, it's that they'll need to inspect the, the footings for the foundation, the slab, but more importantly, the building and the structure itself, how it was built. Then later on, I'm gonna be running power to the building. They could also give you a hard time if they see you grading too much, you know, removing too much dirt. Then they, they could require you to go get a grading permit, which is a huge pain in the ass. It's gonna delay the project six months to a year. So all of that into consideration, you know, I thought I'm gonna make an executive decision and pull the plug and that is pulling the plug on building the garage here, but not all together. I'm actually gonna build the garage right there in that area. And, but, but this is gonna require uh, transplanting like 20 plus trees, which is not gonna be a problem. I'll have people helping me. But as far as why I'm in the Bobcat, that's because I would have to pay a whole bunch of money to the contractor to not only fill this hole back in, but also remove those trees and grade that area dig the footings, get basin, and all that. So what I've decided is to go rent the Bobcat, which I did yesterday, and start filling this hole back in. Once this is filled back in, I'll transplant the trees from there to this area, then use the Bobcat to grade that area, then rent an excavator, dig the footings, and basically have the contractor start where they left off as far as what the garage built was going on here. And not to get sidetracked too much, but if you ever have to rent a skid steer, which is this equipment here, or commonly known as Bobcat, which is a very common brand that makes these things, you rent one where you can not only move the Bobcat or the skid steer back and forth with one of these joysticks, but you can also move the bucket back and forth and up and down with the joysticks. Now, in this case, unfortunately, I didn't know this, and this one has two pedals for the bucket. Which is gonna be pretty tough on your knees again, especially if you haven't done this before, you haven't developed the, the correct muscle strength in your legs and ankles and knees to work with the pedals. So yeah, if you ever have to rent one of these, make sure everything can be controlled by your hands. Now, as far as learning how to use one of these, it's pretty, simple. It's pretty easy, especially if you're good at video games, this will come to you naturally, because you know, basically you got two joysticks, two foot pedals, go forward and back, left to right, you can do three, 360 degree turns, with the joysticks and then the bucket, that's the part that you'll need to practice to get used to because the pedals, it's not natural to use pedals to move a bucket up and down and you know, tilt it forward and back. So, you know, I want to keep that in mind, but you know, it took me an hour or two or three. After that, I was pretty comfortable with it. I could move around pretty easily. And you know, I got a lot of dirt in here on my first day. So, you know, that goes to show you. Well, I'm going to spend the next few, not the next few, next four or five hours putting the rest of the dirt back in. Hopefully I can finish uh, putting all the dirt back in here and even in this out today.
All right, folks, so it's actually the next day, and as you can hopefully see, I was able to fill out most of the hole. I was able to get a lot of dirt in today, and we're pretty much done, but not just that, I was able to transplant three of the avocado trees as well. And here's a closer look at the, at the area. You know, it's still got a slope to it, but you know, this is as good as I can do right now, especially since I'm running out of time and need to get working with that bobcat after we turn that in a couple of days. So I need to transplant all the avocado trees to this area so I can start grading that area. Yep, gonna have to transplant about 25 more avocado trees to clear this area to be able to uh, grade this area for the slab for the garage. So yeah, yesterday we got done transplanting about 25 avocado trees to the spot where the garage was gonna be originally. And here's a look at where those trees were and where the slab for the shop is going to go. I got started on the grading yesterday actually after we finished moving the trees. And I got a decent amount of work done. But that area, that corner is fairly even. I just have to you know, spend the time and work my way up here, then go around. The only problem is, since I haven't done anything like this before, <laughs> this is gonna take me a while. When I give you a shot from above, these lines that I've drawn is gonna look a little crooked. And they're gonna look crooked because they are. And they are gonna be crooked due to this drop off here. Now there is a rule or law here that you know the bottom of your footing can't be uh, less than seven feet from where a drop off is. So I've had to, on this, on this side, you know, I can get this close, but on that side, since this drop off is at an angle, I had to push that corner of the building a little up. So everything is a little crooked. Now you might say, why not just bring this up too? So it's not crooked and everything is straight. The problem is if I bring this end up as well, there's gonna be less space where the garage door is gonna go. And the garage door has to go there because this building was designed to be located in the original spot that, you know, I've had to move since. So, you know, if I push this up too much, see there's not too much space between this and that hill or drop off. So, you know, cars are gonna have to come in like this. I'll probably dig into that at a later date once this is all done. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to resist moving up to this too much so that, you know, I have enough space here. And I also need some space here so a big truck can get through to the, to the water storage tank and the well pumps, just in case they ever need to be serviced in the future. Now I'm just gonna get in the bobcat and start grading. One thing that happened though, last night I had the sprinklers on. One of them, the timer on it was broke and the sprinkler was on all night. So it's gonna be really mushy on that end. We'll see how that works out. So it's been a couple hours more and here's what we have. It looks pretty good to me, but I've got my, uh, my string and line level and we're gonna do some measurements. But at first glance, it looks obviously a lot better. All right, so right at center, we got about seven inches from the ground to the line. Let's move on down slowly. We got six and three quarters, not bad. Let's keep on going. Seven ish that's pretty good let's keep going 
over here, uh-oh, we got nine. Let's keep going. And all the way in this corner, we have, wow, we got, we got a foot. That is in way, way too much. So yeah, from the center to, to right about there, it was pretty even. But then here to here, to this corner where the footing is gonna go, we're missing about, you know, three, four to, to five inches of uh, dirt. Just gonna take my spray can and mark this area. I'll remember it obviously, but, but then again, sometimes I won't. <laughs> and put a big O right there. So we'll backfill this tomorrow. All right, so I went around and measured the difference between the center from the center to the edges. And there's a pattern here. All around the edges, I marked all the low spots. And the biggest areas where, where I had the most amount of difference or they were the lowest were around the corners. Now the sides were kind of Kind of had some obvious little spots too, but the corners especially had the biggest difference from the center. Now this wasn't too bad, this was only about three inches difference. This center was pretty good actually, it was pretty right on. This area, even though it's pretty soft here, I still measured it and it was about three inches off. Again, this center, center of this side was okay. And back to the same corner, which was low again by I forget now, what was it, five inches or so? But overall, I'm pretty happy with what I have right now, given the amount of time and lack of experience I have doing any sort of grading. You know, I just have to find enough dirt to fill these low spots and then call my contractor. He'll bring out his laser level. We'll measure everything, make sure it's okay, and then we'll go on to dig the footings. All right, so it's been about an hour later and here's how the grading looks right now. Obviously, it has improved, but by how much, we're about to find out. So yeah, when we measured yesterday, we had the greatest difference from the center to this corner. We're about nine and three quarters here. Let's slowly move this down. Nine and a quarter, another six feet. Well, we got up to 12 inches. Still 12 inches. And near the footing now, we're at 14 inches. So we went from seven inch difference to, what is that? Four and a half or so. So yeah, we made improvement, but not quite even yet. All right, now the obvious solution for that corner is gonna be to simply grab dirt from the sides and dump it in that corner, you know, compact it with the bottom of the bucket or smooth it out, make it even with the rest of the area. but. Since I'm getting a permit, there's gonna be an inspector coming to check this, I can't do that due to what they call the disturbed area when grading or getting it ready for, getting the land ready for the slab. And you know, they say it can't be much, much larger than the square footage of the building. So, you know, I have a 2,000 square foot garage I'm gonna be building here. So the disturbed area can't be really much larger than 25, 3,000 square feet. And I've already gone past the, the border where the building's gonna be on the side a little bit and that, 
on that side as well. So I can't keep on digging around, picking up dirt and dumping it where I need it because that's going to expand the disturbed area. I have no idea for why that is, you know, for environmental reasons, for maybe land development or whatever the reason is, you can't do it. But the solution I have though, we have is that we're going to be digging the, the footings. You're going to have a lot of dirt when we dig the footings. We can use that dirt to put in that corner or other low spots, smooth it out, compact it, make everything more level then. So for now, I'm done. I'm just going to draw out the lines for the where the slab is going to be. So the contractor, when he comes to with his level to measure everything, and he can see where the footings are going to go, he can check that and make sure everything is going to be good. All right, folks, just finished drawing this line on this end, but while measuring to see if we have enough clearance to the drop off in some areas, since this drop off is not exactly even, it comes kind of close to being seven foot from the bottom of where the footing would go if the footing was to start from here. So I'm actually going to stop now, wait, my uh, contractor is supposed to get here. He's going to give me his two cents and see if we can. This would be a good line just to start the footing. And then after that, we would draw the rest of the lines and go from there. All right, so my contractor just left and he, what he said was actually what I was hoping we could do, which is not only we can draw this line or start the footing here, but we can actually uh, move a little bit closer to the drop off if we make the footing longer because you know the, your footing on the sides the longer it is they measure from the bottom of the footing and they go out towards the drop off and if it doesn't hit sunlight at seven feet when going towards the drop off then you're fine so by making the footing longer or bigger we actually uh, we can have we can go further out so which means that we can actually move this back a foot uh, which is really great because we're running out of space there so yeah by moving that way a foot we are good here. In fact, we can actually have the, the footing come back a foot here, which is great because again, we don't have enough space here because since the garage door goes here for cars to get in here easily. So this is gonna really be helpful. And also we decided to make uh, the, the concrete or the top of the slab be just above this drop off. Now this is a five inch slab and a 12 inch footing. So, and, but you know, we already have a foot here. But again, again, what we're gonna do is actually dig the footing deeper here, put more base in here. You know, the base doesn't cost much, so we're gonna have a really thick base here. Again, this is class two base, they call it. So we have probably like six to eight inches of base, then the five inch slab, which would give us just above grade here, which is great because that means that, you know, I don't have to do any, uh, any work to this grading, any grading work here and water is not gonna get into the garage every time it rains. I still have to do some water management. We'll get to that when we cross that bridge when we get there, because again, this is a slight slope here, but to begin with, the slope is gonna be higher than great. Now, one other thing we talked about was how much it's gonna cost him and his crew to do the work that's remaining, which is, you know, put the base in, dig the footings, put the base in, put the forms in for the concrete, and all that and he's going to get back to me with a code later today now i said I, I know i said i was going to do it myself but to be honest i'm renting the bobcat which is i've had it for for a while now it's due back tomorrow tomorrow morning i'm not going to have enough time to do the to work with the bobcat anymore if i want to do the base and all that again i would have to rent it again but it's not just that it's an excavator i would have to get to, to dig the footings also i would have to hire someone or ask a friend to come help put the forms in and there's always a chance I might, not do it, I might not do it right and then there'll be a problem on, on pour day for the concrete, which is not, not something I'm looking forward to. So he's gonna get back to me with a quote later today. If it's not way off the chart, which, I, which hopefully won't be, then I'll have him do the work, then what's remaining. But if it is, then I'll just simply toughen up and do the work myself. We'll see you at the next video, which would be either me doing the the base and the, or the footings and the forms or my contract. But until the next video, make sure you subscribe and also hit that bell notification so you're notified when that video comes out. And in the meantime, you can check out these videos that I'll put links to on this side of the screen. Any of my videos in the description box, that'll work as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.